Hey, the thing that broke my no buy. <laughs> What is up guys? Welcome back. So, eh, do you guys have your Fjords crew necks yet? My Aquarius friend said that she's like, I bought the chaotic version because then I can stand in the mirror and fix it. And I was like, that's the best thing I've ever heard. So yeah, I just got mine in the mail. I was super nervous slash excited because I just wanted to make sure that the quality is really good and the quality is really lovely and it makes me really happy. It's very warm and fluffy. And I got a size small, just for the record. The listing for all of my merch is underneath my videos. And if you can't see this specific one, just click through, it's in the store. There's my old stuff, my new stuff, my everything stuff. So yeah. New merch, and you guys have been sending me pictures of you wearing them and they make me so happy, so thank you. So anyway, guys, today we're going to be talking about, <laughs> instead of all the makeup that I don't want, talking myself out of makeup, we're gonna be talking about all the makeup that I want right now and also how I already broke my no buy. And we're going to talk about why. And we're going to talk about what I have learned in this process and the media that I have been absorbing with my brain in order to reinforce my no buy and a different mentality on how, you know, I think about my makeup collection and think about acquiring things and stuff like that. And also how that applied to my other decisions. So yeah, there's no moving you guys in. We're just going to go ahead and jump in. So the first thing that I want to chat about is the media that I have been absorbing lately, especially on YouTube. And it has been around reinforcing no buys and talking about Project Pan and opening my brain to a different way of thinking about makeup than I had previously been thinking about makeup. The way that I thought I thought about makeup was that I bought all the new releases because they enticed me and because they were shiny and new and that I went into magpie mode and I was just like acquiring too quickly and that, you know, I was getting backed up and things like that and that I just kind of wanted to take a break from it. And I was watching Hannah Louise post in, I was watching Kyla Fish. I guess those are kind of the main two where they focus more on their own collection. And this is going to become more and more important as we talk about about this in the video. They focus more on their own collection of makeup and curating it for themselves and their mentality of how they move through the world of new releases and the makeup that they own and the way that they like to wear makeup and the decision-making process of curating their collection to make it fit them as a makeup consumer, as a makeup lover, as a lover, as Hannah puts it, of beautiful things. The longer I watched those kinds of videos, granted, they are fantastic. They are very, very resonant in the sense of like I was aiming to do, opening my mind to a different way of thinking about makeup. But what they made me realize was that there was a point at which their message stopped resonating with me. And that was at the point of mindless makeup shopping. I do plenty of mindless shopping. Don't get me wrong. But I have a very unique relationship with makeup. And that is that I wore makeup initially starting at about age 11 because I was really blemished and it was obligatory and it looked terrible because I was shopping at the drugstore and none of my makeup matched and I didn't know what I was doing and makeup has come a really long way since I was in my teen years. And then when I started doing hair, it became part of my uniform where I was required to put on enough makeup that I looked like I was going on a date. That was actually what was vocalized to us at the salon that I worked at. They said, you want to look like from your clothes to your makeup, you want to look like you've just gotten ready to go on a nice date. <laughs> Do with that information what you will, do with it what you will, but um, that was the requirement and it became something where I started to feel, again, like I was in a smaller and smaller and smaller box. And so I went through a whole period of time before I started my channel where I was very anti-makeup and I wanted to unpack why I felt like I had to wear it and I wanted to unpack why I felt like there was something wrong with my face when I wasn't wearing it. And then I sort of rekindled my relationship with it from there. I basically started back over from from scratch. And when I did, what never really came with it was a personal enticement to buy makeup. I've always loved clothes. I've always loved putting on clothes. I've always loved imagining outfits. I've always aspired when I see somebody, I never, ever, ever think I want that makeup look. Even if it's a man, a woman, what have you, I will constantly lust after someone's clothing look. You know, I'm inspired by everything and it's something that enters my brain without me even 
asking it to or even realizing that it's doing it and I do I just get inspired from everything on how I dress that has never happened to me with makeup I also arrived at YouTube in a place where I was watching people do makeup and I wasn't saying I have a massive makeup collection. I'm gonna start a channel to share my massive makeup collection. I was watching it and going, I think I could do what you're doing and do it in a way that other people would appreciate it more than I appreciate what this, what this person's doing in terms of makeup style. And it took me a really long time to kind of find my style. But again, the thing that never came with it was an obsession with makeup. Does that make sense? I have a, a very large stash and it is encyclopedic. It is something that I use as reference material to be able to advise you on the best and worst. And one of the biggest things that I have learned from this no buy so far this month is how much comparison content resonates with you guys. That is an enormous revelation. Like that is so helpful to me that people will actually click on a video that isn't a new release of makeup because it is telling you either what not to buy or comparing a bunch of things that are similar to each other or different from each other or grouped in some way, like a roundup of any kind. I don't know why. I thought that that was something that only needed to happen every once in a while, but it seems to be something that there is such an appetite for because at the end of the day, it is so hard for you guys to watch five of my videos and then glean from those which cream blush out of those five is superior, you know? And I don't know why, it's just one of those things. I had a blind spot for it. That's something that I'm going to be integrating on my channel a lot more often. And for that reason, it occurred to me because I'm sitting there shopping all these new releases, right? I'm shopping all of these new things that are coming out and going, well, if I'm coming at it from the mindset of all the content that I've been consuming lately, it would be to say, do I need this blush? And is this something that is a hole in my routine or a hole in my repertoire where I don't own this shade? And I was watching Hannah review new beauty releases and she was talking about that with the rare beauty releases. And I, I know that this is a long spiel before we even get into the list, but I feel like this is actually kind of the meat of the video, as it were. So she talked about how all of the shades, like uh, one's called Nearly Nude, Nearly Mauve, Nearly Apricot, Nearly uh, Berry, or something like that. And every single one, she's looking at the swatches and she's like, yeah, you went squarely in the middle of that color and anybody with a sizable makeup collection already owns these shades. Knock my socks off. The one thing she fell short of saying, which I was just, I was waiting for and she didn't say it, she goes, she goes, come on Rare Beauty. And I was like, it's not rare, is it? It's common beauty, it really is. And I just, I wish she would have said it, but I realized that my sensibility about makeup diverges there. She says, does this belong in my collection? No, because I'm not going to love this. I'm not going to passionately think that this fills a void in my routine that is going to enlighten me. It's going to brighten my experience about makeup. For me, it is about, and I wish that I was on their PR list, owning, the collection so that I can compare it to other things in my encyclopedic collection to share exhaustively with you. That is why I always found Tati's channel so helpful is because she would, to the best of her abilities, and granted most of it was sent to her, but to the best of her ability, she would go and buy entire ranges of things or buy several shades of something because she wanted to give so many people an experience of what it would be like to have that makeup in their hands, not just here's my makeup collection through my lens. And it's not that one is right and one is wrong, but I realized that one is me and one is not. I am not a channel of here, come hang out with me, a person who's obsessed with makeup and look at all of the things that I love. I am here, come to my channel as someone who just is insatiably curious. I have never approached makeup from a standpoint of, I need that because it's new and shiny. I go one step further and say, I need that because I am curious about whether it lives up to its newness and its shininess and how it compares to the other things that we once thought were new and shiny. And I think that that is the service that I provide to you guys. And that is why I overrode my, you know, technically arbitrary no buy. So let's go ahead and jump into the things that I want. And I will also reveal the thing that I bought. Okay, one of the first things, and this is because I have been using the new Fenty 
gloss balm cream as my project pan. I can never remember what it's called. It's part of my project pan. And while I like the Fenty Glow shade, it is a little bit pink and I've been combining it with other things to brown it out a little bit. I realized, especially watching, I think it was Hannah's first one where she was looking at the new releases uh, this past month, they have a lavender shade. And again, the curiosity. Do I think that that's going to be a, an item that I'm going to use and wear for the rest of my life and keep rebuying and repurchasing when I run out of it? Maybe not. But we are lavender folks here on my channel and I like the idea of an adjuster shade. I like the idea of my weird kind of neutrally olive gold undertones, having something that we know is gonna go a little bit pink and going that far in the direction of lavender. I just wanna know. I wanna know what it looks like on me. And so that's one that's on my list. And so while I really, really like the formula that I got, like I said, I just think I need to do the lavender and the Fenty just so that we know. Like, maybe we top out. Maybe that's it. Like, maybe that's as far as I can go on lavender. Kind of like the uh, the Viseart Paris Edit palette where I put it on and I'm like, nope, this is actually too cool for me. I don't have enough yellow in my skin to counterbalance this and make it work. And I don't have enough um, purple in my skin that it just looks, ooh, at home. Like, it just totally works. Yeah, it's just something that I really, really, like, I can't get over wanting it because I need to know. Talking again about the Rare Beauty entire collection, I will say I completely agree with Hannah on this one. I was looking through their whole mailer that they sent, I, you know, they've sent it to a few different creators that I know who have probably, you know, had more passionate and um, positive reviews of Rare Beauty. I don't blame them for not putting me on their PR list because I haven't exactly been like the most glowing reviewer of that entire line. But the kind of the wheel, right? And it is a liquid eyeshadow, a blush, and a uh, lip gloss, right? It's like a liquid lip balm is how they're putting it. I've zoomed in on the colors. I've zoomed in on the swatches. And I am so blinded by boredom by this release. Like, I just cannot find a shade that I'm like, yeah. And I just wonder what that's about. Were they trying to be the only makeup in your collection? Because I... It begs the question. They're calling themselves Rare Beauty. And there's nothing rare about that. It is a cream blush that looks like a regular cream blush. I don't know about that liquid eye. It looks a lot like the Glossier Skywash, which honestly met with so much criticism. A lot of people hated the Skywash, especially deeper skin tones because it's just really inconsistent. I have no idea if the Rare Beauty eye shadow is going to be like that. And then they also have a liquid lip balm and they all kind of fall into the same category, but like, as Hannah says, they need to dirty them up a little bit. I know that she didn't get this from my channel. She thought this out of her own beautiful brain. And she said almost the exact same thing that I did, that it just needs that M Cosmetics color sensibility where everything has just a little bit of a twist to it, where it's just brilliant. And it works on so many people because it has that kind of intelligence built in to the color theory and Rare Beauty just doesn't have that. And so I do think that I'm going to buy a couple of the cream blushes and I probably will buy one of the lip gloss is just to know the formula, maybe the eye. If you guys really want me to try the liquid eye, I will, but like I, mm, I kind of am fighting the fact that I know I'm not gonna like it. But either way, I just want to know again, and I'm buying something that I know I'm probably not going to love. And that is where we diverge on my channel is because I realized after making so many of these comparison roundup videos for the first half of this month, that that is valuable for you. That is the service, like I said, that I provide is buying something, not because I think that I'm gonna be obsessed with it, but because I want to let you know whether or not you're going to be obsessed with it based on your expectations or whether it's just a forgettable product. And in a lot of cases, I buy forgettable products and that's fine because I want you guys to know that. I want you guys to not buy a forgettable product if you don't want to. So I talked in my last video about how one of my viewers sent me a lip gloss from Lisa Wattier, I think that that's how you say it. I really, really like this. I think it's absolutely beautiful. It's got kind of like unicorn skin glitter in it and it's pink and it smells like vanilla and it's quite nice. And I just want to incorporate some new brands on my channel. This is a cruelty-free brand out of Canada and I was just looking at her stuff 
and I thought that it looked neat. So I kind of want to buy some stuff from that. What was specifically the one that I wanted to try? Yes, they have a color correction palette. This is a line, I'm not sure if Lise Watier is a makeup artist. I need to do some research here, obviously. But it is a collection that's put together very similarly to a lot of the makeup artist owned brands that I really, really love in the sense that it's almost like kit makeup. You know, they have this little wheel of all these color correctors that you can use from a color theory mindset standpoint to cancel things out and conceal and stuff like that. It's not about finding your concealer shade. It's about canceling things out selectively so that you end up with less makeup on your face in the long run. That's how I like to think. And that is why this piqued my interest. It's not a super inexpensive line, but I think that it is like right within, you know, reasonability. It's not Chantecaille or something, which I do want to try Chantecaille at some point, but like every time I put a couple of things in my basket, I go, <coughs> like the price. They did just come out with a cushion foundation that looks really interesting. So if you guys are interested in that, I will buy it and I will try it for you guys. Just let me know. But yeah, Lise Watier looks really, really cool. Mainly the color, uh, the color wheel kind of cancellation palette, but uh, if you guys have any other things from Lise Watier that you know that you love, uh, I will try those as well. Ooh, a big one. Okay, Merit Beauty. Am I a little bit butthurt that they didn't think to reach out to me when they were starting to promote their new line? Yeah, I'm a little butthurt. I think that I'm squarely in the middle of their demographic, you know? <laughs> that I would probably really appreciate all of the textures of their products and the coverage levels of their products, and it's a tubing mascara, for God's sake. So, like, I, I'm, a, I'm a little hurt, but I'm not mad about giving them my money to try it. I did watch Rainier Kramer's video. She did a really, really good uh, review on it. And she has like a different skin tone than me and everything. And she did this whole berry color profile and it was... Mm, it looked beautiful on her, but it does look like it's going to give me a little bit of like Westman Atelier vibes without like the crazy high price point. It also, like I said, is a tubing mascara, which is another thing that we always want to have a, an authoritative, credible opinion on one versus the other in, you know, out there in the cruelty-free makeup world. And not only that, a bunch of you guys have messaged me asking me to try it. So it's definitely on the list, but I have not bought it yet. Okay. The next thing is the new Danessa Myricks contour. I'm assuming that it has a similar sort of formula to her nudist palette, which I am absolutely head over heels obsessed with at all times. So I will be buying that also. And I just want to try a couple other things from her. I want to try those slick eye situations that look like, I don't know, they're just super, super shiny and beautiful. I don't know. I, I might even want to try a foundation. I'm not sure, but uh, there is going to be another Janessa Myricks video coming out soon. And she really got me with that contour. It's just a beautiful shade range. The Urban Decay Foundation, the Hydromaniac, I did message Urban Decay because I have a contact over there. Like I said, they usually do this really cool thing where they email you and ask you if you want the next new release. And it, they kind of stopped emailing me, I think, because I don't know why. Regardless, I reached out and I said, are you guys going to be sending out the new foundation? And they were like, thank you for your interest. Here's the form, fill it out, tell us what shade you want. And I think they're sending me the Hydromaniac. So really, really excited about that. I don't know the last time that Urban Decay put out a complexion product and I'm really pumped about it. So getting that one in PR. And the Lawless Gloss, I also did not pick this up yet. And Lawless, oof, we just have so many feelings on Lawless. Just, I look at my declutter bin and it's so chock full of Lawless. And, and I, uh, someone even commented today on one of my first videos that I did where I reviewed her gigantic, you know, the one palette. And they were like, does your palette kind of underperform? Is it hard to pick the colors up on a brush, et cetera? It's hard for me to use it, et cetera. And I will totally admit that, you know, I gave it a positive review initially and it was because in all of my clean beauty trials, it was something that was exciting and pretty and I was able to make it work, but I don't think that it was worth the money and it is actually a really difficult eyeshadow formula, especially the mattes. And so I would revise that now. You guys saw me review the little one, which was mostly mattes and it was super underwhelming and I don't recommend her eyeshadows anymore. But again, I was just very like foggy headed from trying clean beauty for a long time. Regardless, she has this like skip the collagen lip gloss. And this is absolutely casting no aspersions because like I said, I've got Botox, I've got filler in my lips. I have absolutely no like place to judge here, but it's very similar to the case of when people talk about Kylie skin or they talk about Huda skin or anything like that. These are people who clearly put a lot of money into maintaining their face from peels to injectables to 
uh, you know, laser treatments, just basically keeping themselves looking pristine and perfect and ageless, right? And it costs a lot of money to do that. And then they're gonna put out any kind of skincare line that's saying that you can get these results X, Y, and Z by buying my skincare line when that's just clearly not true. There's no over-the-counter skincare that's going to give you the results that, you know, make Kylie look like Kylie or Huda look like Huda, you know? Now, when we're talking about a lip gloss, I wouldn't necessarily like, you know, Lawless has put a lip gloss out before, but the whole skip the collagen things, it's like, it gives me this whole like, you know, skip the injectables thing when any Lawless very clearly has injectables in her face, okay? Like, <laughs> those lips are beautiful. And I just think that it's a little bit funny for her to actually call it that. That aside, I do want to try it because your girl loves a plumping lip gloss, but it's sold out everywhere. They even rest restocked. I love when they do a fake restock where they're like, ooh, it restocked, guys. You know, it's like four days later. It's like, no, you didn't produce more in that time period. This was, it was a marketing play. But regardless, they've sold out twice now. So I do probably aim to buy that when it does get restocked, but I'm not in like a huge, huge hurry. The amount of lip glosses that I have is staggering. But again, it's not about me, is it? It's not about my lip gloss collection. It's about serving you as the viewer and making useful content. So uh, yes, I will ultimately probably buy that. And finally, the thing that broke my no buy. <laughs> And it is because of that like creeping urgency that Hannah talks about on her channel, that like heart fluttering moment where you're like scarcity, 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 except even when I was able to unwind myself from that scarcity dilemma, that weird urgency, I was reminded about again my purpose and how it's something that I feel like is valuable and it's almost my responsibility if I can get my hands on it to do so before it sells out out of responsibility to you guys and that is the new Victoria Beckham Beauty Mascara and I know a mascara out of all those things that's what blew it for me but T Rose her eyeshadow is sold out and it's something that I have definitely wanted for a while and I know that when her stuff sells out it doesn't come back right away it takes them a long time I genuinely think that they sell out and it's a real sellout. It's not like a marketing sellout. And so for the purposes of reviewing that for you guys to have a clean beauty formula that's a tubing formula because they do say it's 100% warm water wash off. They say it's 100% smudge free. To me, that says tubing mascara. So I'm pretty darn sure that it's a tubing mascara. For that reason, I felt a particular and specific urgency and duty to you guys. And that's not me trying to like override my no buy to get something new and shiny because y'all, it's a mascara. It's not a glittery eyeshadow. It's not a plumping lip gloss. It's not a new cheek product. You know, I've got mascaras. You guys would never in a million years know if I was wearing one mascara or another in a photo. You know, it's not something that was so just like tantalizing that I just had to make an excuse to be like, oh, I just can't resist it. I guess I'll call this, you know, urgency to my channel or something. I just think that it has a purpose and I think that it's important. It's in glass packaging, I'm assuming, because that's what her like bit and lip tint is in and everything and it's just a very to me landmark kind of product in the clean beauty area which we like to you know stay on top of to the best of our abilities i did buy that it will be coming pretty soon and i think that i have gotten the no buy thing out of my system are we going to continue with project pan absolutely i still think it's a healthy thing for me to think about makeup from your standpoint, from the standpoint of a normal makeup buyer who doesn't buy things just because they just came out from a duty standpoint. I still want to keep my feet planted firmly on the ground in terms of understanding that most people don't need more than a couple of something. And I'm going to be doing my like holy grail bag, my like if I weren't a YouTuber video uh, coming up soon. I did one like beginning of last year, but a lot of people have requested like a refreshed one and that's coming. And that is something that I always try and like back away from. Honestly, even just doing my makeup in a different room, taking makeup out of this room, doing it in a different room in front of a different mirror, just in a bathroom or something, helps me get my feet back on the ground of like, what do people really want out of makeup? And a lot of times it's simplicity. And the biggest lesson that I have taken from this is that the point of me trying these products is not just to make an individual review video that's going to attract a bunch of new eyes because it's going to be in the Google results and I'm going to get a bunch of subscribers and a bunch of views and maybe people will buy it. That's equally if not less important than the roundup videos where I am able to swatch a bunch of things next to each other and tell you guys 
what the differences and similarities are between a bunch of products that all have similar levels of hype in the market. And because I don't have a makeup buying addiction, I feel uniquely qualified to give you that opinion, that review, offer that angle. But I feel like it also separates me from the romanticism of buying new makeup. I don't feel like a new makeup item is going to change me, redefine me, give me any way of reinventing myself necessarily. Again, I feel that way about a pair of boots. Don't get me wrong. I feel that way about a, a beautiful pea coat. Absolutely. But makeup has never been the thing where those feelings manifest in my life. And so I do have a very like straight ahead, linear thought process about this stuff. And I think that that is actually what makes me uniquely qualified to review this stuff for you guys. So yeah, that's why I broke my no buy. That's why I'm probably going to keep breaking my no buy. And it's because I think that the lessons of a no buy have reached me, but that I'm not necessarily the audience for a makeup no buy. I'm probably the audience for a clothing no buy. <laughs> So anyway, guys, I hope that this was fun and helpful. If there are any other products that just came out, oh, oh my God, and I didn't write it down. What am I doing? Samantha Ravindahl. Oh my gosh, Auric Beauty, yes, that's happening. 126 is when it comes out and I'm not on her PR list. I understand that there are going to be tons of PR reviews from people who already have their hands on it. We, I, she doesn't know who I am. <laughs> we have a mutual friend in Kiki, but other than that, she just, she has no idea who I am. So why would she send me her stuff? But I will be happy to give her my money if you have not watched her video. Oh my God, the release video, just the way that she talks about her mindset around makeup. You can hear not just this like big Pisces energy of just like carrying the world's troubles on her shoulders, but also someone who has been in it for so long that she knows exactly what she wants. And if you haven't seen the packaging, Oh, for packaging geeks, yes. It is a packaging geeks dream. It is so pretty. So yes, that is also going on the list. And that is why my no buy is bye bye. <laughs> Bye bye, no bye. <laughs> so uh, yeah, guys, again, if you enjoyed this, do give it a thumbs up. If you wanna keep hanging out with me on this channel, hit the button down below and subscribe. I would love it if you did. Thank you so much for watching and for hanging out with me today and allowing me to stay dynamic and change my mind. And uh, I love you guys so much and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.